There was no concept of earthly time there. Coming to my senses, my mother was staring at me with an intense face. She said I was mumbling some unknown words to myself and that I wouldn't wake up, even though she tried to wake me up. Right after that, I told her exactly what I had just seen. My mother, who was always shouted out whenever she heard just the J of Jesus, came to tears after hearing of the story of how her husband suffered. Just like that, my mother and I became disciples of Jesus and took baptismal education, then became involved in the church the same day. She became a passionate person who enthusiastically attends church as much as I do. At this moment, my life changed 180 degrees. I became a person whose lips naturally speak words only giving glory to the Lord Jesus rather than to myself. I was able to become and continue to be a missionary, doing the Lord's work. The last order that God gave me, which is always present in my mind, I will keep watching over you, is what brought me here. Hello, my name is Douglas Hughes. I was asked to make this testimonial video by Landis Fisher of uh, Straight Day Gate Ministries. He used to be my pastor when I lived in St. Louis, uh, which is where I lived when I got saved. Back in 1998, I got saved. Praise the Lord. I had a pretty wild life before that. I uh, was in and out of trouble ever since I was like uh, three, four years old, actually. My mom married a guy 20 years older than her when she was 18, and she left the small town to come to the big city. Uh, he was actually married to a Catholic woman. He performed a fake wedding ceremony. And I found out later all of our uh, last names are made up. Then uh, she left him probably when we were two or three. We were in a lot of trouble ever since then. My brothers and sisters and I were always fighting, practically killing each other, busting each other's heads open. I used to, uh, I set the house on fire even when I was like three, four years old. Um, I busted a, my brother and sister's heads open and uh, sixth graders had open stuff when I was in like first, second grade. Um, we lived in the inner city in Kansas City, and my parents uh, decided it'd be better to move us out to the country. Uh, we stood out more in the country, and everybody knows you, so that didn't help. So we moved to a suburb. We lived on the outskirts of the suburb of Kansas City, Lee Summit, and one block house in the middle of a cornfield. We managed to get uh, kicked out of all the yards in the neighborhood. None of the kids were allowed to play with us. So. We were shoplifting from probably when we were like seven. I uh, started doing drugs when I was ten, smoking pot, huffing gasoline and lighter fluid, anything could do to get high. Our parents was, used to take us to uh, counseling, did family counseling, and psychiatrists, both all on our own, each individual child, and we were on all kinds of psychiatric medication. It never seemed to help unless it made us like zombies, so we didn't get in too much trouble. I actually OD'd on the the psychiatric medication and got expelled from school when I was in eighth grade, yeah. Anyway, as uh, stealing, we used to break into houses, we broke into the school, we'd just go in there and basically just for fun, spend all our time in there tearing up people's houses and digging through all their stuff, same thing with the school. We spent a whole summer in the school one time, hitchhiking from when I was about 10 or 11 also. All this time, people used to come and tell me about Jesus, uh, but I didn't believe in God. I believed in uh, evolution, like we're taught in school, so I would use that as an excuse to not even listen to him. But still, I had a yearning for God in my heart. Like Even when I was like four years old, and they came and took us to vacation Bible school on a bus, and I wanted to raise my hand in church, but I was scared because I was shy, and I hated to get up in front of people, so I didn't want to have to go up in the front. And people would come and say to me, the Lord told me to come over here and uh, tell you about him. And uh, I thought they were retarded fanatics, but at the same time I was kind of jealous because uh, I didn't have anything that I could believe in enough to look like a retard over, I guess. So. And my neighbors took me to church for a little while when I was probably around 10 or 11 also. I used to go to the Assembly of God in Belton with them. I probably said the sinner's prayer like a hundred times over the years. So. And people pick me up hitchhiking and different times I actually wanted to be different but I kept thinking I was going to say the prayer and lightning was going to strike me or something and then I'd be all right and uh, it never did I just went back to doing everything I'd always done uh, by the time I was 14 my parents had had enough I was only coming home 
when they were gone to uh, sleep and take a shower and then I'd leave again all the time and uh, so one day I watched them leave and I went took a shower laid down and they came back and they told me get dressed and we're going somewhere and they took me to uh, juvenile's attention at 26 and Cherry in uh, Kansas City and uh, they were talking to the counselor for a long time I don't know if they were going to take me at first, but then when my mom told them about how I knocked her down once, because, uh, like I said, I was very violent, and after my stepdad had left, he used to throw us, like, threw me all the way down the hall across the kitchen into the, the uh, stove once, I remember. Um, he used to make us stay up all night standing up or scrubbing the bathroom with toothbrushes until one of us confessed. So we'd always take turns confessing so we could just get the punishment over with finally. So I, after he left, I made a vow to myself that I was never going to let anybody hit me again. One day I was being belligerent and obnoxious to my mom. My parents actually padlocked their bedroom so that we couldn't uh, steal all their stuff. But I always figured out a way to get in anyway, so I had broken in and stolen their, their marijuana and was smoking it with my friends. And, Anyway, my mom came in the room. I don't think she caught me, but doing it. But I was being belligerent, and she started shoving me, and I knocked her down. So uh, then uh, the next Saturday, I think it was, my stepdad took me out behind the shed and uh, told me why he was going to do what he's going to do and knock me down. And then uh, anyway, this is a few months later, and uh, when. She was just down there talking to the counselor at the detention. She told them that story. And that's when she decided to uh, put me in the counselor lady. So I went into the detention. I went to a Nateland halfway house first, and I was going home and uh, going to school at my old school. But then I lasted a couple of months, and I uh, ran away. And uh, they put me back in detention. I went to McEwen School for boys, and I was in a positive peer culture group there for a long time. But uh, and it was that time my uh, parents decided that they couldn't have me at home anymore. I was too much trouble. Uh, my sister had gone through the juvenile court already. She's three years older than me. She stole the family car and the checkbook and took off with some of the neighbor kids. And they got caught and. She was in juvenile uh, system until she got pregnant and had a baby and then they let her out and she got married to the, my nephew's dad in the Jackson County Jail um, and he was going to the Jefferson City Prison and then she moved to Jefferson City so she could visit him. Anyway, and then I went in um, and uh, my parents decided they didn't want me home anymore either. And so I didn't get any visits for Christmas or uh, weekends or anything anymore. So I really didn't have any incentive to be good at all. So I just did whatever I wanted, kind of. They used to let us smoke. Uh, so I started smoking when I was in the McEwen School for Boys, actually. The caseworker had talked my mom into signing a permit so I could smoke, so I wouldn't get in trouble for smoking without a permit. And uh, since I was sitting around in the music room all day with all the other boys smoking, I was pretty much smoking already, so I just didn't have a cigarette. So I started smoking. I ran away from there. They put me in uh well, they, since my parents didn't want me, they wanted me to take my GED and get, put me in a program where I'd get a job and pay rent and get out on my own eventually. So. I took the pretest, I aced that, but I wasn't old enough to take the the GD test yet. Uh, they put me in Walden Transitional Living Center. I was supposed to go look for a job during the day, but I just wandered around uh, midtown and downtown Kansas City, and uh, mostly. Sometimes we hung out with the winos behind the liquor store at uh, 27th Terrace and Troost, and. Uh, They'd panhandle money and get bottles of wine, and we'd pass it around and drink it until it was gone and start over again. I ran away from there, 
I went back to detention. They sent me to the State uh, Division of Youth Services. I went to Boonville. While I was in Boonville, I went on a scare straight tour, and they took us to was the Jefferson City Penitentiary on this scare straight tour, and they uh, strapped me down in the chair in the gas chamber. And I went to a uh, state group home number three. They were going to try to release me. My sister was moving back to uh, the Kansas City area with her. Uh, she's having another baby. And I was going to get released into her custody, but I ended up getting trouble again. I was in this uh, group home. Uh, the group leader used to do like astral projection and uh, stuff with us, meditation. Anyway, I got mad at him one day. I threw the salt shaker at him. At the time, I had taken my GED and I was going to college. And I was, uh, since I was, everybody else went to school, I made the menus and did the shopping and stuff. And uh, I think we were in the kitchen after dinner or something, like the way he was looking at me. So took me to the police station, tried to press charges for assault, but they told him since I'm in juvenile custody, they can't treat me as an adult because I'm a juvenile or else I couldn't be there to start with. So they took me to detention and then they took me to a group home number six and I stayed there just as like a guest in this other group home. I wasn't part of the, that was a positive paraculture group also, all of the state at the time. They got the paperwork together to release me because they said I was institutionalized, obviously, because I was acting out when they were trying to get me released to start with. So now they had to release me for my own good. So They got the paperwork together and I turned 17 and I got out and I went to live with my sister and I spent the next several years trying to make up for my missed uh, time when I was in the boys' homes. I missed uh, all of high school and I just basically partied and stuff. I met a girl. We had a son. She already had one child, and we had another child that one ended up not to be mine. And basically, all we did is party all the time. Uh, we worked for a friend of mine's dad for a while, trimming trees, and all of us, uh, the company bought the beer, and we all drank beer and smoked pot all day and trimmed trees and stuff. I was in and out of jail. Uh, jail for me was like uh, kind of like a family reunion because I knew all the people from uh, when I was a kid and detention and the boys' homes and stuff. Uh, I ended up doing a year in the county jail for a burglary. I did, and I started going to church while I was in there because the girls went to church too. kind of like going to church. I thought it would be something good to do to stay out of trouble when I got out. Maybe. I got out, went back to the same old stuff again. I even prayed. I asked God. I don't really know. I don't really know any other way, anything else to do. I mean, this is all I do. And I prayed and asked the Lord if I could have, you know, a wife and kids I would keep me busy and I wouldn't be in trouble and, and I would take them to church and stuff and anyway I got just what I asked for a wife with a couple kids already so I didn't have to start a family all over again we had three more kids and with my other son that made six uh, we were together for 12 years and I worked uh, 60 to 100 hours a week most of the time trying to support all the kids it kept me out of a lot of trouble and I stayed sober and clean for years at a time but every time I'd start Again, I'd be right back into it. Back in jail again. I actually did start going to church once and reading the Bible. I read from Genesis to Job. And I just got confused because I thought David was supposed to be a man after God's own heart. And the people of Israel, you know, had a pillar of fire and a pillar of cloud. And I just thought, Lord, why don't you show, show me that you're real? I would believe you. But eventually, I started drinking Again, and this ended up, my wife was divorcing me, lost my job, all my friends. I didn't even want to live anymore. I was so torn up. It's hard to go from living in a family of eight to being all alone all of a sudden. And uh, then I was in trouble with the law, too, and I went to St. Louis County Jail. At this time, I didn't know anybody. I'd been transferred to St. Louis for my uh, job. I didn't know anybody there, so no more family reunion. I was totally miserable. I didn't want to live anymore, but I thought I owed it to my kids to support them still. And while I was there, I had this dream that I'd had before and I'd forgotten about. Probably six months before that, it stopped. For about a month, I'd had the same dream where I woke up. I was trying to go to sleep, and there was these lights and a bunch of noise, and, uh, and I was irritated, and I'd get up, and I'd go look out the door and see what all the noise is, and there's all these people playing cards at these uh, checkerboards. And so I was in jail trying to go to sleep and I was all irritated and there's all this noise and the light you can't turn it off stays on all day and night there's this light the window in the door with the brighter lights out there 
on and all. There's like 50 guys outside the door in the bullpen all playing cards and stuff at these little tables with uh, checkerboards on them. So when I went, I woke up, looked out the door, and I and I remembered the dream that I'd been having. I kept having it, and I would wake up scared to death, sit up, bolt upright in my bed, and I felt like a ghost had just passed through my soul. And I couldn't figure out what was the deal was, because the dream wasn't really scary. It kept happening over and over, and I thought, this, this is weird. And then I forgot about it 